Hey y'all, welcome back to my channel. I know it's been a little while, not too long, but your girl is back and I've decided I'm gonna bring to you more lifestyle videos. I think from just all the engagement from the last video, I think you guys really enjoyed that. So I have some other things that I wanna bring to the channel. And today we'll be talking about what you can probably read in the description box below, but before I get to that, I realized that I haven't been doing my comments of the week. Since I have been gone a little over a month, I've accumulated a lot of comments on the page and I think I've reiterated this a number of times, but I'm obsessed with you guys in these comments and you sharing your experience and how you guys are actually trying to help each other below and just, it means so much to me. So there's like a number of comments I can pick any week, but I only can choose one. So this week's comment of the week comes from the love to work out. So I think that's part of why I chose it because I share that love. Uh, but the comment reads, wow, this is deep. I am just seeing this video today, 4-16-2023. You have been through a lot with your kidney function. I didn't know you played basketball or had a previous kidney transplant. I discovered my kidney failure in January of 2023. I hope things are going much better for you. You are very strong. Your videos inspire me. Thank you. Thank you for watching. I can only imagine you're only, what's well, June now? So you're half a year into your journey and I can, well, I can't imagine because I've been there, but where you are with the realization that life is now different. I hope you're coping. And I think just the motivation that these videos inspire you in some way is why I want to continue making them. So thank you. I don't know your name, but the love to work out, continue to do the things that you love, and I hope you're fighting hard, and I'm for certain that everything is going to be just fine. Good luck to you. So guys, there's been some things circulating in the news about Selena Gomez and her best friend, Francia Raiza. So Francia donated Selena Gomez a kidney back in 2017 because Selena was diagnosed, I think a couple years prior to that with lupus and it caused her kidney failure. And so there's been a falling out between the two of them because I don't know if anybody can actually account for this for certain, but part of the news that I'm reading is that Selena Gomez is partying and drinking and her best friend Francia isn't happy about it. She feels like I've helped you get a new chance at life and now you're not taking care of that chance by over drinking. So what I wanna do, this is gonna be a two part video. So the second part of the video, which will be the next video that I upload, will be actually my donor she wasn't my donor per se. She was somebody who donated a kidney on my behalf, so it prioritized me on the kidney donation list. I've talked about this a little bit in my past videos, but that's called the Paired Exchange Program. So I had a friend, really a really good friend of mine, she donated her kidney so that I could receive one. No, I guess it's not exactly the same because Francia actually donated her kidney to Selena, but my friend actually had to go through the surgery, give up her kidney in order for me to actually have a second chance at life. So it's pretty similar. I do consider her my donor. I'll go into the paired exchange in a totally different video because that is its own process. And there's a lot to unpack here for this video. I actually am going to introduce you to my donor in the next video that I will be uploading next week. But today, we're gonna continue with the lifestyle topics. I wanna talk about drinking so consuming alcoholic beverages while on dialysis and then into after receiving your kidney transplant. And just so we're clear, this video is for 21 year olds that are dealing with chronic kidney disease who are either on dialysis or have had a kidney transplant, okay? So without further ado, let's get into this video. Let's talk about this. sure you don't forget to click so you guys know me I am an advocate for I think I reiterated this too many times in my last video but I am an advocate for all of us being able to live your life like it's it's super important I feel like I don't think 
we should allow our circumstances to hold us back from trying to live the best quality of life. But when it comes to alcohol consumption, it gets a little tricky, right? We party, I've partied. Prior to my kidney disease, I was a college aged kid, you know, who wanted to party. And I think that was one of the first things that came into question <laughs> as a young 21 year old being diagnosed with kidney disease, it's like, oh my God, is this like, am I gonna ever be able to have fun? You know, and that's the thoughts and ideals of a 21 year old. But when it comes to alcohol consumption, you just have to be careful. Having an illness or not, you know, it's, it's a toxic thing that we put in our body. And there are some benefits to some drinks like red wine. There are actual medical journals out there and studies that confirm this, but that's not what we're talking about today. We're just talking about your general day where you just wanna have a glass of wine or you wanna go out and party and have some cocktails, have some shots, have some shots. How do you adjust as a dialysis, chronic kidney disease patient or transplant patient who now has this new opportunity at life that you're now needing to take advantage of? So I'm gonna start by talking about the dialysis patients. If you are on dialysis, you should know this, that you only have a certain allowance of fluid intake a day anyway, especially when you're on hemodialysis, you're only getting that dialysis a couple or few days out of the week. So you really have to make sure that you are maintaining a level of discipline when it even just comes to water intake. I would say, Drinking while on dialysis, especially hemodialysis, isn't the best thing only because you're already trying to prevent that fluid intake of being swollen. And we all know alcohol is a dehydrator. It makes you dehydrated anyway, where to overcome the dehydration from alcohol, you really need more water. Your body would need more water. But this is something you should go to your doctor with. I don't think this is something you should try to sneak around and do because you feel like it's wrong. Like. I've said this time and time again, my nephrologist at Vanderbilt was someone that I genuinely trusted and trusted his judgment. And I felt like we had that open dialogue where I could ask a genuine question and he could give me his medical opinion without me being offended or him taking it personal. I am a human. You guys are human trying to learn what's going on with your body and how to operate in that space. Go to the person that you trust, which should be your doctor. <laughs> and ask those questions. So I asked them about drinking. I'm not even somebody who drinks a lot. Like I do socially drink. During the pandemic when I was on dialysis, I got into like, ooh, what's, what are refined wines to have? I didn't drink so much because I spent a lot of time by myself and I just didn't feel good a lot. So drinking wasn't something that I really wanted to experience, but I did, I did every now and then. But before I did, I did consult my doctor and he's like, red wine was okay. I'm not telling you that red wine is okay for you in your circumstance. As you know, everything is different from patient to patient. So it might be something that your doctor feels like you absolutely should stay away from. Take that up with him or her and decide accordingly how you're gonna operate. Now moving on to transplant patients. So this was the whole issue, or is the whole issue, because I haven't heard any update, but I think this is what's ongoing between Selena and her best friend, is that you have a new kidney, like a fresh new start. Let me not say fresh new start, because that person who donated you that kidney had a life before you as well. And in my case, because I was in the paired exchange, even though my best friend donated on my behalf, I did receive somebody else's kidney that I don't even know that person. That's how that paired exchange works. Like I said, I will address that in another video, but I don't know how he lives his life. I, I was aware that he was a man, but I wasn't aware how he lived his life or what he did. But I myself have now received this kidney that is way better than my previous circumstance. I do wanna take the best care of it because I know without this kidney, my body is suffering. So do I drink? Do I party? That's the question that you have to ask yourself. I would say, and this goes for anybody, not somebody just with a chronic illness, everybody's body is way more healthy without alcohol. But should you be able to consume? Are you selfish to consume? 
after somebody has been either brave enough to go through this surgery and give you a kidney or somebody was selfless enough knowing that when they passed they wanted to make the most of that situation and help somebody else's life by volunteering their body to help save others that's a lot when you think about it it feels like a lot of weight to hold on you as a person that's on the receiving side of that kidney i do have an opinion about selena and raisa and that i think once that kidney leaves raisa and it now is in selena's body i i personally feel like raisa has no more agency over that kidney that kidney has now become a part of selena's body and as we are in this active fight with the fight over especially women's bodies it's now belongs to her and i believe if you're going to give be a selfless giver don't be somebody who's giving with stipulation or just don't give at all. I understand. I have to think to myself, if I was, if the roles were reversed and my best friend was in need of a kidney, the thought process of how selfless I would have to be to give up that kidney is crazy. It's really like, wow, like that's, that's incredible. And I like to say for the people that I love, I would do it at the drop of a dime but I've been on the other end of that. So I know what that means and how important that is for life for some of us. But if I'd never dealt with what I dealt with, I don't know, who knows? I'd like to say that I would be someone who was selfless enough, but I don't know, that's not my life, that's not my journey. I, I know I'm gonna get this question. I know you guys are wondering. Dawn, do you drink now that you've received your transplant? Yes, yes I do. I've never been a big drinker. I might be somebody who drinks once a month maybe twice a month and at my age i'm not just getting shit faced <laughs> i have a couple of drinks if that or a couple of glasses of wine i'll share a bottle of wine with a, a friend and that's about it and that's all i need you know with my tolerance that's for me that's more than enough so yes i i do indulge as an adult as a responsible adult i indulge and that's something that I've spoken to my doctors about. And that's not something they have a problem with. Especially they encourage, if I am going to drink something, let it be red wine. So I'm a Pinot drinker, but very seldomly. I do have a bottle in my fridge right now that's been in there for a couple of weeks, maybe more. Um, so I, it isn't something that I do frequently, but it gives me joy to be able to come home and cook dinner and have a glass of wine. I'm living my life and I'm happy. But I, I always press like taking care of that kidney, just doing everything that you can possibly do. And I think the last thing that's, you know, needs to be addressed in here is obviously we are on a strict medicine regimen. So making sure that you're not combining alcohol in your meds, that is just a no. Right? So you do have to be very particular about when you drink, when you do decide to drink, like that's something that I make sure that I'm timing out. You cannot take those medicines and drink any type of alcohol or wine, I would say within the hour that you take the medicine. But don't quote me on that. Like I said, I have my specifics with my doctor. I just encourage you guys to go to your doctor. Please, they'll be able to give you the best advice. But I'm just here to encourage you to what? What am I gonna say? Live your life? Yes, please. But do that as you're being educated important so make sure you guys stay tuned for next video i did prep my friend about me doing this interview with her but i didn't want her actual responses i want her honest opinion as somebody who elected to go through surgery she was perfectly fine she didn't have to give me a kidney she did that out of the kindness of her heart how would she feel about me as somebody that i think she loves and trusts if i wasn't taking care of that kidney or if she perceived how i was acting I wasn't taking care of that kidney. I'm very interested to see. And there's no wrong answer. It, for me, it's like you're entitled to feel how you feel. I just don't agree that Raisa should now feel entitled to that kidney and what she's doing. But on the opposite end of that, I do understand 
her being a little upset. I understand that. I understand her being like, dang, like, that's what you're deciding to do with your life? If that's what Selena's doing. These are all things that are being speculated. There's no, like, video proof of this actually going on. So, yeah, stay tuned for that video next week. And outside of that, I love you guys. Oh, I reached 3,000 subs. My next goal, my next milestone that I want to reach is 5,000 but thank you guys so much for subscribing, watching, staying tuned, commenting. Just make sure you don't forget, if you are watching this, to subscribe and turn on your notification bell so you are notified whenever I post a new video. Thank you guys, as always, for watching. And I'll see you in my next video. You'll want to see this one. I'm excited to introduce you to my daughter. I love you guys. Have a good one.